<laughs> Good morning, and I hope you are well. <laughs> Well, funny as this may sound to a lot of people, um, this is not, it's not a, a fun, it's a, a something to make fun of. You have the electoral commission responsible for our elections. You have the court, which are responsible for matters when it comes to issues of litigation. Uh, then you have the police that are supposed to maintain peace and order. If you have 28% of Ghanaians, only 28% of Ghanaians having confidence in the police, 38, 36% in the courts and 33% in the EC. But th there's a whole historical analysis that is done by the CDD. Um, you have been, in fact, you started journalism, I, I believe, in the 90s, right? Yeah, 2000. 2000. Okay. Yeah. So, um, in 1999, the EC had 63% Trust like sixty three percent of Ghanaians who spoke to the Afro Barometer, uh, uh, those who were for the Afro Barometer said they had trust in the Electoral Commission, the courts fifty eight percent, the police at the time forty nine percent. Was there anything that you believe accounted for that at the time? Yes, uh, I think uh, um, when I started journalism, I think the the say whatever you want uh, at the time uh, if whatever you want about the president or the god leader at the time but what you could not say was that he was someone who could condone um, corruption and um, uh, activities that, that brought less and less integrity to some of these institutions but I think which is also important to explain to the public what the Afrobarometer is all about so the barometer uh, reflects the changes uh, in circumstances and opinions of the citizens as it relates to key uh, state institutions. So, so over a period of time, they measure the public's opinion um, about these institutions based on the circumstances in which they find themselves. And there you have it. That's the verdict. I think in those days, people were focused on politics that served the people. And the leader at the time uh, ensured that, you know, in discipline and issues that uh, didn't bring integrity to the services were swiftly dealt with. And so I think that usually that also reflects in the conduct of the um, officers in these institutions um, and then that is why you have some high ratings because the public who engaged with this institution believed in the 90s that at least the institutions were a lot more, had more integrity and a lot more responsive. That is not to say that there were no partners in there, but it will say that a lot more people believed in those institutions. Now, there's an interesting dynamic when it comes to 2002. In 2002, trust in the EC, in fact, only 49% from 63% said they had trust in the EC, 45% uh, from 58% in 1999. But the police then, uh, their trust level started to increase. In fact, 51% in 2002. By 2005, they had gone to 64%. Even though there has been increases in the EC and the court, it's only the police that was seeing a steady increase from 49 to 49% uh, in 1999 to 2002 to 2005. What a change at the time? Yeah, I think, uh, in my opinion, I think it all boils down to leadership. Um, I think that if you have a leader that uh, uh, you, you will realize that, I think, um, prior to that, um, there have been some very terrible situations with the police. Uh, cocaine missing up and down and them embroidered. So there had been an attempt to clean up the system uh, and to ensure discipline within the police service uh, in the run uh, soon after those uh, events. So I think that there, was a, there were a lot of activities that were carried out to ensure that the police wind itself off that negative um, reputation. So it, it would have boiled down to the leader. I don't know specifically what, what would have accounted for that, but I think it would have boiled down to those 
circumstances where prior to, uh, just prior to that there had been very terrible uh, uh, cases against the police and there had been a conscious effort to raise uh, the integrity levels of the service as you know uh, the slogan is uh, service with, is with integrity so so I think that could have accounted for because just prior to that uh, their reputation had tanked um, because of a few scandals that rocked the service. So I, I, I think so. Now, there's, a, there's, there's a something I wanted to ask you, because uh, in 2005, that was after the 2004 elections where um, I, I'm sure you monitored closely where uh, I think Jokobe Chebilamti was said to be the one who actually declared the elections. Interestingly, confidence in the Electoral Commission went up in 2005 too. 75% of the people who were spoken to at the time believed that the electoral had trust in the Electoral Commission. Um, does that surprise you? Uh, 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 once again, I'll go back to leadership. You know who was the Electoral Commissioner at the time? And if you look at the, uh, uh, the, the record, uh, you realize that Afari John uh, was a very, even to today, Afari John remains one of the most respected electoral commissioners uh, of all time. Um, I, 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 I'm somebody who has a lot, tremendous respect for him because I used to encounter him um, quite a bit um, because I was into political reporting, so I used to encounter him quite a bit. And he was a man that was focused. He was a man that was not political. He was a man that knew, to, knew how to... Uh, uh, outsmart or outmaneuver the political system. And so he uh, was still the uh, electoral commissioner at the time. And I don't think it had anything to do with uh, Jake or whoever. I think it has everything to do with the kind of leadership that Afarijan brought to the electoral commissioner. Mind you, a lot of the systems we are writing on today was something that was was uh, systems that he had put in place to ensure that we we as a people uh, would have followed up, uh, perfected, and and by now we should have had the electoral commission's reputation uh, almost seventy percent because it is it is one of the most crucial institutions. Okay, that underpins our democracy. What underpins democracy is choice. And what underpins choice in a democracy are elections. So if you don't have the reputation among the people, an election is, a, is an activity of the people. So if you don't have a good reputation uh, or, or um, high reading from the public, then, 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 you, then it's a very serious thing for a democracy. And so um, we are, are typical of we Ghanaians. We don't take things... Uh, of this nature serious until it tanks and everything goes here wire and then we start uh, agitating. So you can see that um, from the time that Afarijan was uh, um, electoral commissioner, the reputation was stable. I would rather use that word, was stable. Um, respect for that institution was stable. But subsequent to that, unfortunately, um, I think uh, Charlotte, Charlotte didn't get the chance to really stabilize herself uh, and was violently removed. But you can see that once leadership started tinkering with the uh, elect, elect, electrical, uh, ele electoral commission, uh, their reputation has never been the same. Um, it is also a lesson that for critical institutions of democracy, of vertical and horizontal accountability, it's always important to run on the side of a merit-based system. Because you see, at the end of the day, it's easy to put a political point in there. But, but results are important, especially for critical institutions uh, like the police, like the courts, like the electoral commission, like the military. Um, it is so important that um, you, you, you keep a very, very good reputation because trust is what guarantees uh, people's decision to go to the court or report to the police or to go and vote. Okay, if they if the public do do not trust the outcome of what uh, they will get by participating, it reduces uh, their interest. And if you look.
look at the data, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you realize that uh, from time immemorial, from from time for some time now, uh, it appears that uh, the people, the number of people who participate in elections are dwindling. Okay, and so that's why you would like to give credibility to these kinds of research, because if less and less people are having trust. Uh, in the organization that administers the electoral systems, then, and you are f you're seeing that the numbers are dropping, then you can uh, uh, realize that uh, something is off somewhere. And for me, it boils down to the leadership of those organizations at any given point in time. Uh, whether it is the general government's leadership of those institutions or an individual leadership of that institution uh, and, it, and and how it creates uh, a perception in the eyes of the public. Now, having said that, I want to jump all the other years and come to 2022, because this year, um, in fact, there are crucial elections. Um, if it doesn't go well for you, if, okay, so how the election goes is determined by the EC, and the police are supposed to provide security for that election. If it doesn't go well for you, you are supposed to go to the courts. Uh, to challenge the results of the election. Now, 33% in the EC, that's supposed to handle the elections, 36% in the courts, uh, and then 28% of Ghanaians believe in the police. Um, what do you make of, first of all, the fact that this low numbers of Ghanaians actually have trust in these um, institutions of state? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's a very, very sensitive topic, uh, um, Senna, because, you see, like I was saying to you, uh, the, w what is democracy? Democracy is, is just a rule by the majority. How did the majority get to rule? The majority gets to rule by participating in political activities, culminating in elections, uh, uh, in the choice of a particular kind of leadership. Okay, so... That, so the Electoral Commission is the administrator of uh, um, democratic systems. So if you lose respect and trust or reputation from the general public, the, the, the democracy is gone. Okay? So technically you can say that the, the reputation or the number of people who respect our democracy now is around 32 or 33 percent and that is very serious considering that we have a population of about uh 36 million if i'm not uh 33 or 36 million if i'm not mistaken so you just imagine if you went to school and you're writing an exam and you got 33 percent what would that mean it would mean that you would have failed so it is just a verdict that our democracy is failing and and this you can take this as an isolated instance, but I don't think it is, because you look at all the sectors from the economy, uh, from the environment, from education, from security, from everywhere you can realize that we are deteriorating. Ghana is living on old glory, and unfortunately, this verdict only goes to confirm it, and it, people must take it serious. I see you drawing a... a, a um, an example uh, of our situation because elections are coming up. If the electoral commission is less and less respected, it impacts on how people uh, resolve electoral disputes. Okay, um, because if the electoral commission and you you will see you will see that um, because we we tampered with the electoral commission position from the, with the violent removal of Charlotte, you will realize that since that time, there has been a lot of friction. Because you see, at the end of the day, the stakeholders are sensitive to political tinkering of the Electoral Commission. So since that time, you, you have a situation where uh, a president comes out new and quickly uh, removes the Electoral Commission. Um, and once he does that, he selects someone who cut, her, who cut her teeth uh, in the law firm of the, one of the key founders of their political party, the Rocha. The electoral commissioner 
um, cut her teeth as a lawyer in the chambers of the Rocha. So you know that there's a history to their connection with this woman. Uh, if you look at Charlotte, you can't you can't point one direct connection to the NDC that the NDC did this and she's connected to the NDC in this way. You can say the same after uh, uh, about uh, Afari John. So you realize that someone wanted to remove, violently remove Charlotte at all costs. Even when she supervised her election, that incumbent that appointed her lost. Okay? So it was as if, well, if this can happen, if uh, you can appoint uh, someone who can supervise an election that makes you lose, then maybe perhaps that is not for me because I want to entrench myself. So rather, I will appoint someone that is politically connected and aligned to me in the hope that he will not supervise an election that uh, will make me lose. And if you look at what happened uh, in 2020, you can understand that someone didn't want someone to lose. So it's for me, uh, uh, it all ties in. But the bigger picture of all of these things we are witnessing is we will witness it in the people's attitude. There are places where you find people lynching people, uh, instant jacks, because they don't believe in the court system or they don't believe in the uh, 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 security system to report the poli- uh, to the police and you believe that the police will do justice to your complaint. So when people don't believe that, oh, Akra and Wachi Nikra out in the Kwa, police will follow Bejaino. By the time you realize they lynch him to them, okay? You have a situation where uh, uh, a political party with about, you know, uh, I don't know, 12 million followers believe that if you trust the electoral commissioner or you, if, you, if you trust him, he might betray you. So when they have a grievance, they want to fall on their supporters uh, to put pressure on the system, okay? So you want to go to court and you realize that, look, if this court system, they will use the technicality uh, to throw your case out. So you want to find another way. So all these things are important because at the end of the day, there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger picture to look at that it completely destroys the rest of the institution because these are strategic institutions uh, that interact with the public uh, on daily basis. You talk about the, uh, the courts, you talk about the police, they interact with the public on daily basis. Imagine a country without the courts. And imagine a country with only 30% uh, uh, or 29% uh, uh, belief in that organization. You have a hoping number outside that probably might not participate in those kind of activities or may decide to have an alternate way of, of, um, of uh, resolving their dispute. So these are key things. It is a verdict on who we are as a people and the, and the system we are running. And if we want to be a democracy that is respected, that fulfills the aspirations of our forefathers and the people uh, of this country, 53%, 29%, 32% is not what you get because if this was an academic exercise, it is a fail. So it's technically a verdict that our democracy has failed. I'll come and take a thought on something that concerns the police, but is there a, anything that can be done, especially maybe generally the Ghanaian, it will take some time, but to at least rescue some of the confidence in these institutions a few months to the elections? And are you seeing any effort from the leadership to improve that? Now, it is not the way this leadership uh, operates. Uh, this leadership operates uh, on complete uh, con- command and control over strategic institutions. That's how they operate. That if you're not aligned with me, you know, you're not somebody that I can work with. They don't believe in independent-minded institutions because they want to capture the command and control system for their own benefit. So you'll be surprised that you know, the, these ratings are not good for the nation, but it's good for them, okay? There's a reason why the ratings are where they are. Uh, but so long as an electoral commissioner can read three election results, 
and still get me to become the uh, uh, the president, and then the courts will, you know, you 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 know, you and I know, the president, this president has appointed more judges to the court and the Supreme Court uh, in the uh, uh, in any other than any other president in history. So if I can if I can get an electoral commissioner who is least respected, okay, uh, has the lowest uh, uh, reputation among the population, but can can have an election where he reads three different results and still get me to become the president. And if I can have a court that I can pack and appoint so many judges from district to Supreme Court, that can uh, play games with my cases that seeks to oust me from office. And if I can have a very politically minded police uh, uh, institution where recruits are, are taken from my party and my party only, uh, and they will do my bidding by shooting people to death during election day in, a, in, in an attempt to scare them off, uh, uh, voting me out of office, then the reputation does not matter. And this is why I believe uh, this, this administration will not do anything about it. If they got a chance, they will even, it, it can go to 10. They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't care. Okay, because you see, politics is no more a service to the people anymore. It is all about those who are in office. And like I told you, look, you remember I told you the last time that if the people's attitude do not change to political leadership, nothing will change. You see, the leader is not there to uh, make choices for the people, okay? The leader is there to give aspiration to the choices that have already been made by the people. So if these people do not set a higher standard for themselves, the leader will not be the one to set the standard. So you see what has happened in Kenya. The citizens decided that, no, we deserve better. We deserve better and we, we require better now. And you can see the amount of uh, the, the impact uh, that it has had on the president's decision to cut all these expenditure, back all these people, you have a situation where in Ghana, we complain about the number of ministers, yet this president appointed double the number, okay? We complain about an economy where an exchange rate was $1 to four, uh, to four cities. We said it was worse. And we had a president that has taken the exchange rate to 16. We, we, had, we had a situation where we said, oh, the NDC was corrupt and needed to be voted out. We've, we've replaced that with, with, a, with, with, with a stealing government, and we are still watching. So for me, it is not for the leader. In fact, sometimes a corrupt system works in the benefit of the leadership. So it is for Ghanaians to decide that the standard of what they want. And once that standard is set, a leader will give meaning and aspiration to that. It looks to me that here, the reverse is the, the, reverse is the case where the people are sitting down, the government is doing what they want, politicians are enriching themselves and stealing money left and right, and then the citizens are waiting. They sit down and wait eight years. Uh, some senior citizens would have died by the time that eight years uh, 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 elapses. We wait and wait for them to destroy the nation, and we go back to the ballot box, not to look at the issues one more time, but to look at where somebody comes from, I come from this place for that reason, me, I cannot bring myself to vote for this group or that group, okay? At the end of the day, it is the general public that loses. And you can see, because of this attitude, where we allow our government to do whatever they want, okay? I have never seen any government since I started engaging with our democracy who has been allowed to do what they want like this one. Okay, they they appoint their family members. They do what they want. They they when you say it, the president says he will not listen to anybody. He 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 is literally like doing what he wants. The nation is just sitting down watching. Okay, and sometimes when you say it, then oh, they bring the police out. Listen, I always tell people, uh, 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 
um, center. There's no power in this world that is more powerful than the people's power. Okay? Look, I'm not instigating anybody to go and destroy our institutions. I'm the last person to do that. <laughs> but if you look at if you look at the system, the least thing they, they call the they call the military. Okay, the military will go out there and brutalize the people, and then the politicians are like, yeah, you did a good job. Look, the military uh, are also gradually losing their reputation, and the military is only powerful so long as they have the support of the of the of the ordinary civilian. Ghana's active military size is sixteen thousand people. Okay, sixteen thousand soldiers spread over sixteen regions. Okay. So imagine a population of 32 million people saying they want to agitate. What can the military do? Absolutely nothing. What is the, what is the number of uh, uh, police people we have in Ghana? So, but because Ghanaians protest mm. in small, small groups, it's easier to send 50 military, 100 military people. So these institutions are beginning to feel like, oh, we are that powerful. Mm. The civilian administration is setting the standard the threshold for when they involve the police and when they involve the military. The military doesn't seem to have their own standard. Now look, this is a purely civilian issue and we don't want to get involved in this. Once you call the military, because they politicize those institutions, they can find their own to go there with a political mindset to brutalize citizens. So we are gradually reducing uh, the reputation of these institutions. Who, in my opinion, when, when, when something hits the fund, are supposed to stand in with credibility with the people. Okay. When the political elite misbehaves and the citizens wake up, you need a soldier or a military person or a police person or security person to say to you that, listen, I hear you. Let's find a middle ground to solving this problem rather than this. If you continue politicizing these institutions and they have these low rankings among the population, when something happens, everything goes down. Hmm. Mr. Acha, I wanted to take your view on the other issue, but uh, time is not our friend. Uh, I will thank you very much for your comments on the first one. I think it will be helpful in the next conversation. I have to have a quick interview, then I have a guest in studio. So I guess we can arrange for later and speak on that in a bit more detail. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, that's uh, Raymond Ancha, Acha, an international risk analyst, a security person. Join us this morning. A very interesting uh, contribution to the conversation.